Hi everybody, this is Lara at pureelliotwave.com. I'm going to be presenting as part of this FX Trader's Edge Elliott Wave forecasting event on the 17th of August. I'm putting a link in the description box for this video. Please click on the link and go on through to this page and register for this event. You'll be giving me a lot of support by doing that. So that's what I get, I get your support, but you get a whole bunch of free stuff. You get an hour's access to my analysis, so I'll be covering Bitcoin and the S&P 500 live with you. And if I have time, I'll also cover NASDAQ. But wait, there's more. If you register for this event, you'll also have an exclusive offer to sign up for a free month of my Pure Elliott Wave Weekly on my website, pureelliotwave.com. That's once a week analysis of Bitcoin and the S&P 500 and gold and US oil for a whole month free. But wait, there's even more. If you register for this event, you're also going to get the opportunity to sign up and get a free copy of my ebook, Pure Elliott Wave. The rules in my book, which took me years to write, the rules are exactly the same as Frost and Preached's classic Elliott Wave principle, but I've written it to try and be as clear and concise as possible. But wait, there's more. You'll also go in a draw to win one free ac lifetime access to my online course, Learn Pure Elliott Wave, which is normally priced at $395. Not only am I a CMT, Chartered Market Technician, no, not only do I have over a decade of experience, I've been analysing markets since 2008, I'm also a trained, professionally qualified New Zealand secondary school teacher. I used to teach high school science, biology and geography. So coming from that angle, I've created some totally unique learning exercises as part of this course. If you're a kinesthetic learner, you'll learn by doing, and I find those learners the hardest to reach, so I've got some truly unique learning exercises to teach you Elliott Wave structures. There's 20 lessons, most of them have quizzes or further reading, and as part of your access to the course, you'll have me supporting you via email to help you with your learning Elliott Wave. So there's a whole bunch of really good reasons for you to click on this link and register with FX Traders Edge. And if you do so, you'll be giving me a lot of support and I really appreciate your support. Thank you. I'm going to look at Decred with you today. Um, I've had a couple of comments about the sound quality. Honestly, it's not my microphone. I have a really good quality Marantz microphone and it costs like over $200. Um, the problem is I'm in Mexico in an apartment right by the ocean because I surf and the waves are, well, it's not too big, but it's not small today. You can hear the ocean and it's really hot. I've got no air conditioning, so I have to have a fan on me most of the time. Otherwise, I just can't function. So, yeah, it's the sound of the surf and the fan. It's not the microphone. Just so you know, let's have a look at Decred. Um, well, the first thing I notice is... On the monthly chart, here's the start, the first big high, and this low made new lows below the start. And then we've got what looks like probably an impulse up higher. I know it looks like a one, two, three wave structure, but there'll be a third and fourth wave in here. I'm looking at this upper wick. The fourth waves of these cryptocurrencies are really commonly more brief and shallow than their counterpart second waves and that's especially prevalent when they have these really strong impulses. It's something I'm used to with commodities and it happens when they have extended fifth waves. There'll be an extended fifth wave in here and that's what I'm going to have a look at on the 17th of August. Extended fifth waves in commodities and cryptocurrencies, particularly Bitcoin. I'm going to give you some examples and we're going to have a look at what that means for your profits because I think that's one of the most exciting aspects of these charts. Okay, I'm so sorry, I'm going to stop rabbiting on. I want to try and see, could this have been a leading diagonal? I want to have a look. Mm, an ending diagonal? I don't know, some kind of diagonal? I just want to see if that will fit wavelengths. Because you want to see this as a five wave structure, yeah? But I'm uh, suspicious it's not actually going to work in terms of wavelengths. Oh no, it does because the fifth wave is shorter than the third. So this could have been a five wave motive structure. Uh, the trend lines don't look great. There's these overshoots here of the 2-4 trend line, although it's adhered to here quite nicely, isn't it? So that could have been a five wave structure. 
which would have been the end of the movement because now we've got a new high beyond the start I don't know I think I'd rather label that as a double zigzag but I think I'm going to begin my wave count for decred at this low and I'm going to weigh, label that first wave up an impulse and I'm going to give it I think I'm going to give it cycle degree so I'm going to say start it here at the low cycle one the question will be is cycle two over oh coming up tomorrow unless the surf's really good and I can't get out of the water <laughs> coming up tomorrow I'm going to look at Luna with you yeah I'm going to have a look at Luna a little bit crazy but it's not totally dead who, lo who knows what it's going to do next we'll try and figure that out tomorrow I think this is probably going to be the right wave count I think I don't know what structure we're going to have for cycle 2 let's go from here and do a weekly chart and have a look at the structure of cycle wave one and I'm viewing these on a semi log scale I think we'll probably have primary one over here primary two and expanded flat primary three probably here four I think I want to see oh no I think mm, yeah oh possibly what are these wavelengths 30 46 and 136 yeah this is what I mean by an extended third wave beautiful example in here I think you've got a quick one two you've got a three four there intermediate five is extended fifth waves to end third wave impulses one degree higher for these markets are very commonly extended look at the profit multiple here intermediate one thirty dollars intermediate three just over 46 intermediate five a hundred and just under 137 intermediate five is just under three times the length of intermediate three that's where most of the profits going to be in this extended fifth wave Let's get some labels in for intermediate one that's why that concept of extended fifth waves is so important it makes a difference to your profits and that's what we're here for isn't it um, I think this is probably going to be a double zigzag nope I can see uh, yeah yeah okay I can see a five down here so I want to see this Oh no, there's going to be an overlap. Is this going to lead, be a leading diagonal? Is, are the wavelengths going to work? I don't think so. Three is longer than one. Four is longer than two. But five is not longer than three. So it doesn't work. Could this be a triple zigzag? Mm, I don't know. I don't think so. Well, I'd have to put that there. Because this looks like a three. And then that means this is an expanded flat. Yeah, that's no, I think I'd put this up here. Uh, y is really long in relation to W. Well, actually, in terms of price distance traveled, they're actually close to equality. It just looks a lot longer because of the scale. So that's actually okay. No, I think I want to put this right down here. Oh, I don't know, now C doesn't look very good. No, I think I want to put this here. And maybe this here. And how is this going to work? That looks horrible. I think this. Would this overlap? I think this. Is, oh no, it doesn't. Okay. Okay, then I think this uh, I don't want to have a running flat in here though mm, no that's not okay is five some kind of ending diagonal oh goodness what a mess I think I'll try and f figure that out at the daily chart level let's have a look at some detail in there
Okay, I'm happy with W. Primary W is a zigzag that looks okay. A, B and C, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, that's an impulsive number, no problems there. Intermediate A looks like a 3, intermediate B a 3. Intermediate C, could this actually be an ending diagonal? Does it matter too much? No, not really, but let's have a go. Uh, yeah, no, I don't think so. I still want to see this as an impulse. And I think I want to see the fourth wave over there. Oh yeah, this is going to be okay. And nope, I want to see this up here. Like that. And then this, oh, excuse me, this here. That's good. And triangle. Nice. Yeah, that looks good. A uh, nice looking barrier triangle. Intermediate A here looks like a five wave structure. Minor one was extended. Intermediate B looks like a three. Okay, now the question is what is happening here with minute five? Or oh, could minor two be a combination? Or could minute four have continued further? Uh, okay, so technically I could try and label 4 as a triangle, but this is what it would look like, and it would... No, so you can't do that because D moves beyond the end of B, violating the rule for both a contracting and a barrier triangle. You could do this, and it's going to meet Elliott Wave rules, but it's going to look stupid. I mean, technically, that's possible, but that looks stupid. No, I couldn't publish that. I think 4 is over here. Oh, okay. Four is over here as a combination. X here, yeah. Mm, I don't like that either because then within Y, B is huge in relation to A. How many times? I'm just calculating the length of B in relation to A within minuet Y. 3.3 .3 times the length of A. Well, I think that's the best fit I'm going to get. So I'm going to leave that, I'm going to put that here, here, oh that's going to be slightly problematic actually, because you've got to have, oh I don't know about this, mm, the BD trend line, does that look essentially flat, it's got a very slight downward slope, D is about the same level as B, this is the only Elliott wave rule that's not absolute, involves a little area of subjectivity, the rule for a barrier triangle, well rules for a barrier triangle, B can move beyond the start of A, when it doesn't it's a regular triangle, when it does it's a running triangle, C may not move beyond the end of A, D for a barrier triangle should end about the same level as B so that the BD trend line looks essentially flat to the eye and E may not move beyond the end of C. So this is the part of, well this is the rule within a barrier triangle that's not absolute. D should end about the same level and that's subjective isn't it? So it's slightly below, less than a dollar, not too much, a few cents, uh, it looks not too bad. Okay, so I think that's going to be my wave count for decred. Starting it here. Knowing that this fits as a five wave structure, I think it would also fit as a double zigzag, W, X, Y. It could be seen as either. Because there's a new high beyond the start of this, it doesn't matter now, and I think the wave count should start from here. And I think there's a corrective structure that could be complete. Let's put a channel around that, actually. That it might be too conservative. Let's try a best fit channel. Maybe bring this up here. Oh, nice. Okay, so there's strong resistance there. I'm going to leave that channel alone. That looks pretty good. It's shown we price found resistance here the last completed week. This week, beginning 7th of August, is incomplete, so we can't draw a conclusion from that candlestick. But this has got a huge bearish upper wick bouncing coming down off resistance there that's pretty bearish um, if this trend line is breached to the upside I would have some confidence in this wave count so I think that would be my bottom line for confidence I mean a confidence that this some confidence that this low is sustainable if we see new highs above this 
trend line, then I would have confidence that these lows are sustainable. It's unsurprising though that there's resistance here, a pullback, and then we could see a close above or a breakout above the trend line, a pullback to find support and then moving up and away. That would be very normal behaviour for price. Let's have a look at some technicals. I'm going to have a look at this low back here. This is the low in March 2020. What does that look like? At the weekly chart level, this is the low for the week beginning 8th of March 2020. At the weekly chart level, there's a couple of bullish long lower wicks at this low, but there is not a candlestick reversal pattern. We have a bullish long lower wick here. We have a doji following it, another doji the week after that these upward weeks coming with lighter and declining volume. It's not until it moves into these weeks that volume starts to actively push price higher. Now remember this low has been sustained. We haven't seen lows down to this point following March 2020. So this is a sustainable low. That's why I'm looking at it. I want to see what are the technicals look like at a previously identified sustainable low and then compare and contrast it to the last low. So no candlestick reversal pattern. Volume not immediately bullish. Only a few weeks later do we start to see obviously bullish volume. And then volume drops off substantially but we again start to see volume pushing price higher. Not every week though, it's not a very obviously bullish volume profile. Once we get into this week it starts to be bearish, I suspect this is probably close to the high, yeah it is, and now we're seeing downward movement. At the low on balance volume, let's check did it exhibit bullish divergence. This close of this week 10.7086 versus the close of this week 16.7874, yes there's some bullish divergence here. On balance volume is higher, price is closing lower. At the low, ADX indicated a downward trend which had a long way to go before it reached extreme. It had only really just caught up back here at the high. Uh, an upward trend reached extreme, ADX declines, the DX lines whipsaw, ADX finally catches up just a very few short weeks before that low. RSI exhibited bullish divergence. The close of this week 10.7086 versus the close of this week 14.2587 RSI is moving higher price is closing lower there's some bullish divergence telling us that there is weakness within this downward movement at the weekly chart level money flow index also exhibited some strong bullish divergence and it had not reached oversold at the low stochastics also exhibited bullish divergence and it had previously reached oversold at the low ATR was flat for the last part of that downward movement. It's within this piece of movement here, that's upward movement, ATR increases. From this high moving on downward, ATR declines and then flattens off. So there's weakness in that bear market. So that's the weekly chart level. What about the daily? At the daily chart level there was no bullish candlestick reversal pattern. The wick of this candlestick is less than twice the length of the real body. That's a requirement for a hammer candlestick pattern so it's not a hammer but it is a bullish long lower wick. This session has a lower high and a lower low. It comes with an increase in volume. The candlestick has closed green fairly strongly and the lower wick is very long so I would expect or I'm going to make an acknowledged assumption that within this session most of the volume is upward and there is some push from volume pushing price higher in this green session and so I would read that as bullish off that low. The volume profile immediately off the low some decline in volume and then we see upward sessions with an increase in volume downward sessions overall declining volume a little bit confusing here downward session stronger it's not until we get quite a few days off the low that we start to see volume really strongly pushing price higher remember this low dated 13th of March 2020 seven dollars 65 and a bit has been sustained that's why I'm looking at it the volume profile a little bit difficult to interpret off that low would have been very this would have been a hard one to identify on balance volume exhibited some quite strong bullish divergence the close of this session 10.5587 
versus the close of this session back here, 16.4720. On balance volume is a lot higher, price is substantially lower. So there's some good bullish divergence there. ADX at the low finally caught up with the with the downward trend, indicated a downward trend, but it wasn't extreme. At the daily chart level, RSI reached oversold, does not exhibit bullish divergence with price. Money flow index also reaches oversold, does not exhibit bullish divergence with price. RSI reaches oversold, does not exhibit bullish divergence with price. Money flow index also reaches oversold. Let's have a look at this point and compare to this point. Let's see if there's bullish divergence. The close of this session, 10.7086. The close of this session, 16.5312. Price is closing lower. Money flow index is moving higher. There is bullish divergence. Stochastics oversold but there's a downward trend indicated, so we use RSI, not stochastics. And ATR, the last part of this bear market, declining toward the low. A little increase at the low, as there's not quite a selling climax, but some strength at the end of that. Increasing through the first part of this downward movement, declining toward the end. Okay, let's compare and contrast that with the last low. Okay, the last low, 19.9775, week beginning 12th of June. We'll look at weekly and then the daily chart level. I'm just going to calculate the close of this candlestick. Is it halfway or more into the real body of the prior candlestick? No, it's just under halfway. It looks like it is because of the scale of this chart, but this has not closed halfway into the real body of the previous candlestick. I'm looking at that because that's a requirement for a piercing pattern. So this candlestick is a little bit bullish, but it's not a bullish reversal pattern. So at the last low, at the weekly chart level, there is no candlestick reversal pattern. The volume profile at the low, the immediate the week immediately following, 13.4 million compared to 14.8 million. A decline in volume for the first upward week, but then we start to see some increase in volume through here and a big explosion in upward volume here. I would read this volume, volume profile off this low as bullish. Between price and on balance volume, the close of this week, 21.3465. The close of this week, 66.8450 on balance volume is moving higher price is closing lower this indicates weakness in terms of volume in that last piece of downward movement this divergence is bullish at this low there was no downward trend indicated ADX reached very extreme for the previous upward trend and during this bear market spends its time declining with the DX lines whipsawing it's finally caught up and told us there's actually a new upward trend coming up off that low. So ADX is now bullish. At this low, RSI just reaches oversold. I would read that as quite bullish. That's an indication that that low could be sustained. At this last low, there is strong bullish divergence between price closing lower and money flow index moving higher. And stochastics reached deeply oversold is now returning to neutral territory. Let's have a look at the daily chart level. Finally, here is the low, the 18th of June 2022. The candlestick immediately following it is a good strong bullish engulfing candlestick pattern. So at the daily chart level there is a bullish candlestick pattern off the low. It also has support from volume, that's very bullish. We get into this candlestick here, strong push from volume pushing price higher. And again here, really strong volume for upward sessions. I would read this candle, this volume profile as very bullish. At the low, the close of this session between price and on balance volume, the close 25.0888. The close of this session, 21.3465. On balance volume has moved higher, price has closed lower. There was bullish divergence between price and on balance volume. ADX at the low reaches... Uh, tells us there was a downward trend. It's a lagging indicator here. It's based on a 14-day average, so it's going to take a couple of weeks to catch up. And here it indicates the downward trend was extreme, and now it declines. What's it telling us now? It's telling us there's an upward trend, which is very extreme. I don't think as extreme as this one can get, though. We'll have a look back real quick. How extreme can ADX get? 
at the daily chart level. Where's the most extreme reading? Back here, April 2019, and here, May 2018. ADX can get very extreme for an upward trend. Um, but I would expect after it reaching this extreme here, above 45, we may see some pullback. This may have been enough to resolve that. At the low, it didn't indicate an extreme trend. Between price and RSI, it looks like there's some bullish divergence after RSI reaches deeply oversold. The close of this session, 31.6193 versus the close of this session, 21.3465. RSI has moved higher, price is closing lower, bullish divergence. When in the context of deeply oversold RSI, that's very bullish. Likewise, money flow index at this low would have been indicating bullish divergence after it's reached oversold. Stochastics, a little bit of bullish divergence, oversold at the low. And ATR, overall declining from this point here within this downward movement, overall showing a decline to the low with a little increase at the low. It looks like this low for decred could be sustained. Here's my bottom line though, I want to see a new high or a breach of this channel on my weekly chart to have really good confidence that this low is sustained. I have a very strong suspicion it will be, but that would be the confidence required for this Elliott Wave analysis. That's all from me for Decred, Luna tomorrow, if, uh, well if the surf isn't too good. Okay, thank you all so much for your support and I'm really looking forward to this upcoming presentation on next week on Wednesday the 17th. If you haven't already registered for that, please do so. I, as I understand, spots are limited. You're not only getting access to my live analysis, you can also see it afterwards. If the time isn't suitable for you, you'll get an email with a link. You can click on the link to see my um, presentation. You'll get freebies from me. You'll also get freebies from the other six presenters in this uh, presentation. So it really is in your best interest to register for that. Thank you so much for your support.